Goalie Childs, the 2020 WCC Defensive Player of the Year. We're calling it <laughs> now, man. Yes, sir. Let's get after it. It's Let's great, go. It's great to state a goal and just go from there. But what? Uh, welcome back. It doesn't feel like you left. <laughs> Maybe emotionally we were letting you go. But, uh, yeah, obviously you went into it yesterday. But when did you start to think about the possibility of coming back? Um, honestly, it, it was always in the back of my mind. Um, I didn't know how big of a possibility it was. Uh, I think when you're going through the process of working out for NBA teams, you got to be all in. You got to let them know you're all in because um, you won't be taken as seriously if they think that you're coming back. So it was always in the back of my mind, the idea of coming back, getting my degree, doing something special. So uh, I didn't know how likely it was going to be, but after seeing everything that's going on uh, with the program and seeing this coaching staff and seeing my guys working their butts off, uh, it, it definitely became more of a reality. So they influenced you as well. It wasn't necessarily just you making the decision. You saw them and thought, hey, maybe I want to be a part of that. For sure. For sure. When was the specific flipping point? Was there a moment? If so, when, when was that? Uh, I don't think it was a moment. It was more of a process. Um, it was a process of really thinking about where my values are, you know, and uh, especially last year as a 20-year-old 20, 20 kid. Uh, turning down a lot of money was hard. Right now as a 21-year-old, turning down a lot more money was hard. <laughs> um, but I had to realize that's not what it's about, you know, and that BYU is such a special place, and I love this place. Like, I love this place so much. And even I remember last time I was on here saying, like, this is a hard decision. Like, it was so hard uh, to think about leaving this place. And when I talk about Cougar Nation, how much I love them, I mean it. Like, I'm here to just do something special and sell out for this, for this city, for this fan base, for my teammates. And like I said yesterday, I'm going to be a pro for a long time. I know that, but this is my last chance to, to do something with these guys. I think that a lot of people are excited because it's you, of course, but because you were kind of the third of three mm -hmm. leading scores in a row and the first two decided to go pro mm -hmm. and you came back. So there's kind of this, uh, Extra emotion, perhaps, from that, but I know I know you have some thoughts on on Eric Mika and uh, Elijah Brandt that you want to yeah, mention. Yeah. It's Cougar Nation, I love you guys. Please, please stop giving so much crap to Eli and Eric. Those are two of the greatest guys in the world. Uh, they made great decisions for their families, uh, for their futures, and when there's the next guy at BYU and they're putting their name in the draft, thinking about leaving, uh, telling them. Don't be an idiot like Eric. Doesn't do any good. It doesn't help. So uh, just show love to those guys and everything they did for this program. And uh, those guys are like brothers to me. And yeah. And, and let's be honest. If BYU had more guys that went early to the draft and were, and perhaps because they weren't drafted, there's some frustration like, wait, why wouldn't you just stay? Right. Yeah. I, I get that part of it. But yeah. Uh, and hopefully BYU does have a one and done at some point that gets drafted. That'd be great. Well, that's a good situation to be in because that means you have great players yeah. in the program, a right? A two and done, a three and done, whatever. Yeah, and you yourself were in that situation where you could have been two and done, three and done, but here you are, and you said yesterday you want to do something special and magical, and we've been asking BYU Sports Nation to define that. What is that to them? Everyone's got a different opinion. What is it to you? Uh, to me, it's, it's kind of like what Coach Postman was saying uh, when they asked him, what are you, you going to do? What's the goal? And he said, whatever you think is impossible, that's what we want to do. And I feel the same way. Whatever you think is too high of a goal, that's what we're shooting for. Can we, we talk about what those are? Go ahead. The final four, right? Let's do it. Like, like the final four is the, th would be the crown jewel of this program. What or a that? national championship. Or I a don't national know. championship. Yeah. The, like, I'd it, settle what, for a yeah. final four, if, if, it's un <laughs> if, 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 if it's unrealistic and people are telling you it's stupid and – that you can't do it, then you probably have the right goals. Sure. You know? sure. Brian yeah. Logan likes to say, if you reach your goals, they weren't high enough. Yeah. Which, exactly. which is interesting. Exactly. And, and Gonzaga in the league. How about we start with winning a West Coast Conference championship For when sure. Gonzaga is in the league? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. This group seems like it's a group that obviously we've talked about the seniors, and you pointed out during the break, hey, there are eight. Evan Troy and Taylor Martin. So our bad, there are eight seniors. Uh, you bring in Jake Toulson. This is a group that uh, a couple years ago we thought, okay, we can build with it. Now these guys are seniors. So whatever you thought was possible is, is perhaps possible because it's your last season. Does that weigh into all this? Okay, it's my last season. 
for all for, sure. for that group. For sure. Uh, for a lot of guys, it's this is my last season being on a team. You know, for a lot of guys, it's my last season in college, and uh, there's something special about that. Uh, something special about just willing to sell out to win games. Like, <laughs> no senior cares how many points they score. They don't. Every senior just wants to win and have team success because it's their last go around uh, at, at the most magical place in the world, the BYU. You know, it goes BYU then Disneyland. BYU then Disneyland. Yeah, exactly. So the seniors are just ready to to go out and play for each other and uh, to play for this university. Other than your wife, who did you tell next that you were staying at BYU? Oof. Um, I think my guy Tim Davis. He's he's helped me so much with this process. Uh, so yeah, he's he's been kind of a rock for me there. Uh, someone that I can confide in. So probably my wife, Tim. Uh, my mom's been a huge part of this process, and then the coaching staff. So what did the coaching staff do? How did you tell them, and what was the reaction? Yeah, so um, I just told them that I was ready to to come back. I was pretty straight up about it, but I told them. I want to be challenged every single day. You know, I want to be I want to be coached harder than anyone you've ever coached before. I want to be coached harder than anyone on the team. I want to be challenged every day to get better. And it was funny. We actually had a one of the rooms in the coach's office. It said test in progress the whole day. I was like, "What is going on?" I was like, "No one's taking a test and no one's taking a test right now." So they go open the door. They got confetti, balloons, everything. It was hilarious. So, it's like the conference yeah, room, no, right? Yeah, yeah, it was so funny. Yeah. So and it was a good. Yep, we got some video of it. That's where it is. You can see the you confetti can see the on stuff the ground, up there. streamers. Yeah. Oh man. So <laughs> it was it was funny. They hit up Zerchers so hard there. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was good. It was great. <laughs> uh, with this group uh, during the summer um, and, and this coaching staff. Um, the previous coaching staff certainly had their strengths. Mm -hmm. I feel like this coaching staff has more playing experience, obviously. Chris Burgess went all over the world. Like, once a year, he would just go to a different place. Obviously, Mark Pope played in the NBA and in the CBA. What role did that play in terms of, okay, player development? These guys can get me to the level they were at. Yeah, first off, I just want to say I love the previous coaching staff. You know, they did amazing things. They did amazing things for me. Coach Rose just gave me an amazing opportunity coming in as a freshman. I remember when I was being recruited by him, he said, I can't promise you anything other than a fair chance. And, and that was huge. And he instilled confidence in me, instilled confidence in the guys. Um, I loved Coach Lacombe, who recruited me. That whole staff was unbelievable, and I'm so grateful for them and everything they've done for my career. But this new coaching staff definitely has a huge emphasis on player development, and that's huge. I think uh, all four guys that are on staff right now, that's kind of all their specialties. And that's really unique at the college level to have four different coaches that can really help you work on your game individually. And I think it's going to be huge because they can spread out and work very intimately with each player on the team. And I think it's going to be huge. Do you BYU? work on uh, half court shots with Nick Robinson ever? Is that a oh, thing? Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, he's he actually <laughs> he's got game though. He does. He really does. This staff has legit game. Though. Oh, he's in crazy shape. I was so surprised. He's like he could play college basketball right now. Nick could. He'd, oh, he'd be fine. What about the others? Half court, they'd be great. Because <laughs> <laughs> Cody can shoot. Yeah, he can Chris shoot. Chris can play. So, so he can play. I don't he's know huge. about I don't know about Mark. I'm sure he he's a he's got yeah. a good jump hook and a drop step. I'm sure he he would will himself to be yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. He's no yeah, doubt. He, he, he he's play. that guy. We, he can, he oh, can motivate sure. himself for sure. We saw him shoot sure. the other day and I thought, sure. yeah, maybe half court. Yeah. 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 Half court, they'd be great. <laughs> Coach Robinson, he's good to go. Wow. BYU senior Yoli Childs with us. That kind of on feels BYU weird. Sports yeah, station. Senior. It sounds amazing. Well, we didn't think you were coming back, so we never thought we'd it's, say those words. Great. He's yeah, a BYU great. senior. You mentioned you want to be the West Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Year. You block a lot of shots. You grab a lot of rebounds. You make plays. What has to change specifically for you to be the guy that is the best defender in the league? Uh, I, I think that's what's really going to take my game to the next level and help me take this team to the next level. And it's just going to be intensity. You know, just raw intensity on the defensive end, flying around, making plays, guarding multiple positions, being able to guard the the man coming off the ball screen as well as guarding a ball screen uh, from the big perspective, just being versatile and playing hard every single possession. Is that an effort thing, or is defense a an acquired skill? I think it's both. There's there's a couple different kinds of defenders. Some defenders get by by being super quick. Some get by by being really long, athletic, and some get by by being really smart. So. Uh, I hope to come in and be a pretty long defender, 
uh, fairly quick defender, but a really smart defender uh, and be able to get in my positions and be in the right spots to make plays. Does this mean on the perimeter specifically that you would need to guard uh, more of a guard type as opposed to who you typically pick up? Yeah, I think it'll be both. Um, I think the way the NBA is going, there's a lot of guys like Draymond's and PJ Tucker's that will guard the post. So uh, I'm sure I'll be guarding centers at times, but uh, being able to switch is going to be huge. Uh, being able to have lineups where we switch a lot of ball screens and uh, depending on matchups, uh, guarding a three, a two, or a one uh, to start the game or to close the game. Yeah, and you brought up a point that is real, and I like real talk. It's hard to turn down a lot of money and good opportunities to play basketball and get paid to do it, especially when you're like, you want me. You want me so much you're going to pay me this much money to play basketball. So which professional venture was the most difficult for you to turn down? Um, probably uh, the Korean team. They're, uh, they have a pretty solid league. Um, I've heard the environment there is great. Oh, I know. I lived yeah. there for two years, Yoli. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. My bad. I got to do my research. I will come he, he visit you, you if you do yeah, end up at do, any point in the future. Research. If you're in Korea at any point in the future, I will make a trip out to visit you. Yeah, there, there was a player in my uh, that was signed with my same agent who played there for a year, got MVP of the league, came to the Thunder, signed a three-year deal. So uh, it's not a bad league. Uh, the money's really good. So uh, that was exciting, but... I'm, I'm more excited about being here for sure. Okay, riddle me this. The rules changed in terms of get, if you don't get an invite to the combine and you can do, sign an agent, but you don't, whatever, blah, blah. There were new rules this year. If these rules aren't in place this year, do you come back to BYU or did the rules play uh, a factor because you had more time to think about it? Um, first off, the rules make no sense. <laughs> they I'm, don't. They're confusing. They're, they're all over the place. <laughs> They've changed probably five times in the last year you actually if so this is like nobody knows this i didn't even know this until like a couple weeks ago but if you go to the combine they said that you could go through the draft and come back right if, and, you, if you get invited yeah you did not and then the nba guys were like no we're not doing that so they had to go and change it so even the guys that went to the combine had to choose by may 29th so it's stuff like that where it's changing like crazy uh. it's super confusing uh, even college coaches, some agents, people don't really know. So that's yeah. not good. Yeah, it's not good. I yeah. was so, a little confused when I saw like a guy the like uh, Namiyash Keta, Utah yeah. State. He got invited to the combine, uh -huh. so I'm like, why is he announcing now if he doesn't yeah. have to? Well, now I know why. Yeah, so, that makes sense. But yeah, they got to figure that out. Well, regardless of the confusing rules, I'm glad that you had the time to go through that process and yes. still be able to make it. Yes. Is your wife playing volleyball at Utah Valley University, by the she way? She is. Okay. Oh, nice. so, okay. So we got two seniors playing this year. It's That's gonna great. Be, it's going to be so fun to be able to and go down and watch her. She's coming off a knee injury that yep. she sustained last August. Uh -huh. Is she healthy? Is she good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. She's almost 100%, okay. so she's looking good. Uh, awesome. She's been through it before. She had a knee surgery at Utah, came back really strong. Other so. knee or same knee? Other knee. Okay. So I've wow. seen her do it before and come back stronger, so uh, I'm hoping for the same. That's outstanding. Yeah. Both of you back for your senior seasons. Yep. It's going to be awesome. Let's go, man. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma right now. We're just going to pile it on. I'll take it all. Yeah, yes. for this I'll whole team and those eight, on, not man. six seniors, right? Yeah. To go do something magical. We appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate you guys. Thanks, Yoli. Thanks.